Let me be clear. Forget budget phone's limitations. The Redmi Note 13 Pro punches above its weight. We're talking Instagram-worthy cameras, game-devouring processors, and a battery life that laughs at low power warnings, all without breaking the bank. But is the hype real? In this video, I'm going to show you everything you want to know about the Redmi Note 13 Pro. No sugar coating, just raw testing. Camera performance in detail, gaming pushed to the edge. Can it compete with the giants like iPhone or Samsung or crumble under the pressure? First stop, unboxing. On the need, the minimalist box, the usual suspects, manuals, warranties, even a grippy case on the star of the show, that sleek phone right there. First impressions, thin and chic, and maybe a tad iPhone-ish. The included 67 watts fast charger, flagship familiar. I had the same charger with Xiaomi 13, so no fancy surprises, but when you have a phone this polished, who needs them? With the unboxing formalities out of the way, let's get hands-on with this budget beast. Fresh upgrade in Redmi design department, the frosted glass finish feels elegant and the color options are diverse but I think white wins. The marble back didn't quite hit the mark for me, gives it a kind of budgety vibe. Glossy white would have screamed pro but hey, that's just my personal preference. The camera bumps adds a nice touch, very iPhone-ish, very cool. If I would put it alongside flagships like Xiaomi 13, Pixel 8 and even the iPhone 15 Pro, it definitely holds its own in the looks department. What do you think? Drop it in the comments. So no design surprises here, buttons are where they belong. Classic layout, excellent ergonomics, Type-C, speakers, even a headphone jack. Practicality all the way, I'm sure a lot of users will appreciate that. While it doesn't have an official IP rating, the fern boasts a level of water resistance equivalent to IP54, which is not enough to give people the confidence of proper water resistance. So light splashes are okay, but poolside selfies might be a stretch. Okay, first things first, the display. Gorilla Glass Victus shields a stunner, a vibrant AMOLED panel that pops with rich colors and sharp details. Resolutions crisp at 1220 by 2712 pixels and brightness shines at 500 nits, almost catching the iPhone 15 Pro, but hey, gotta leave something for the flagships, right? Bonus points for the under display fingerprint sensor, that makes the phone feel modern, again practicality all the way. But wait, there's more, 120Hz refresh rate keeps things buttery smooth, perfect for gaming and scrolling without that annoying jodder. But let's talk sound, this phone packs a punch, stereo speakers pump out immersive audio and Dolby Vision and HDR make everything from YouTube to Netflix a feast for the ears and eyes, so sound wise it's no slouch. Audio quality stands shoulder to shoulder with the iPhone 15 Pro and the bass even gives the Samsung A54 a run for its money. Speaking of A54, buckle up for a closer look, I might actually prefer it to the Note 13 Pro despite the performance gap. Wild, right? Seriously impressive for the mid-ranger and trust me, this is pure phone nerd enthusiasm, not a paid plug. Fresh out of the box, the Note 13 Pro runs the latest Android 13 with Xiaomi's familiar MIUI 14 on top. It's smooth and refined, just like my Xiaomi 13 experience. The only catch is Xiaomi's usual bloatware still lingers, which hopefully the upcoming HyperOS update tackles. But hey, the commitment to the software is real. Four years of OS updates and five years of security patches keep you future-proof and protected. So for a mid-ranger, that's pretty impressive. Alright, let's dive into the cameras. The phone real showstopper, a massive 200 megapixels lens, one of the highest megapixel counts on the market, the kind of spec that we can see in Galaxy S23 Ultra or the latest S24. But there's a twist, you'll usually shoot at 50 megapixels by default, thanks to a magic trick called pixel binning, which is smoothing pixels out without blowing up your storage. The phone's got zoom game on point too. Photos stay sharp and detailed up to around 4 times zoom, but pushing it further makes things blurry. If you want that full 200 megapixel detail, go for it, but say goodbye to zooming in that mode. 
The image stabilization combo keeps things steady even when your hands get shaky. Plus, the sensor is surprisingly large for a mid-range phone, soaking up more light for low light performance. Think solid details, decent noise control and shadows that don't look like nightmares. Not dethroning the iPhone or Pixel, but it holds its own for the price. Wide angle 8 megapixel camera might not blow your mind, but it gets the job done, fitting everything in without crazy distortion. Pixel 8 might be my winner, but hit the comments with your pick. 2 megapixels macro camera exists. Heavy HDR processing. Do your own math. One feature that blew me away handheld long exposures. So, don't need a tripod, handheld long exposures right in your palm. It's a feature borrowed from Xiaomi 13 and let me tell you, it's the only feature I crave on my Pixel 8 and seriously makes the Note 13 Pro tempting for any photographers on the go. Let's check the video. 4K at 30fps, smooth and steady thanks to OIS and EIS. Compared to Pixel 8, it's a close call. Pixel takes the color crown, but the Redmi stabilization steals the show with maybe a bit more sharpness too. Some artifacts here and there, but overall video goes to Redmi, especially for the price. Nighttime video showdown. Under dim street lights, things get tricky. The Redmi shows some minor autofocus blips and occasional artifacts, but it holds its own. Solid low light performance for the mid ranger. The iPhone, however, takes the cake with its crystal clear footage, vibrant colors, and insane detail. Different leaks for sure. But what do you think? Hit the comments and let me know your pick. The phone includes a built-in short video maker. Think pre-built 9 second templates. You choose a style, shoot quick 2-3 second clips, various angles and it adds filters and throws in music. The result? A TikTok ready mini edit, perfect for quick fun or even short presentations. It's a gimmicky but I kind of dig it. Some of you will definitely find creative ways to use it. Selfies got thumbs up from me. Portrait mode did the job too. Not gonna win awards, but for casual snaps, it gets the job done. Forget featherweight chips, the Redmi packs a heavyweight punch. The Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 on 4nm architecture is a serious upgrade, delivering flagship level performance and smooth multitasking. Apps launch instantly, games run like a butter, and this phone begs to be pushed. So gaming, not a problem. The Adreno 710 GPU leaves the old Mali days in the dust, delivering flawless 120Hz display action. On 2.2, the Redmi clocks in at a respectable 625,000 points, putting it squarely in the upper mid-range territory. But numbers only tell half of the story, let's see this phone in action. Asphalt 9 Legends, maxed settings, flawless graphics, butter smooth frame rate. The phone eats racing games for breakfast. Call of Duty Mobile, maxed graphics, high frame rate, basically running at 90 FPS by default. Smooth gameplay, barely any drops, even in chaotic moments. Aiming stays responsive, and I swear I felt some lag from other players. Genshin Impact, the mobile phone kryptonite. I started on default, then cranked it to ultra. Thanks to those four powerful cores, the Redmi Pro surprisingly outperforms its flagship brother, the Xiaomi 13. Sure, there are some frame drops, but the graphics, the shadows and the lighting, the phone punches seriously above its weight in demanding games. Budget powerhouse alert, I'm impressed. Wi-Fi 5 with blistering 2900 megabits per second downloads, smooth uploads and even 5G thrown in for good measure. It's not the absolute bleeding edge, no Wi-Fi 6 or 6E here, but streaming, downloading and online gaming, this phone throws lightning fast and reliable connections at everything you throw at it. Plus, for ultimate flexibility, one of the SIM slots doubles as an eSIM, so you can switch carriers or add travel plans right through your phone's settings. No microSD card expansion here, so choose your storage wisely. The 5100 mAh battery is interesting. In normal use, it gets you through a full day no problem, but I had some art drain moments here and there, even in airplane mode. Software gremlins maybe, or rogue apps misbehaving. 
The good news, gaming tests yielded a solid 6 hours and casually I stretched it to 2 days, competitive with the Galaxy A54 for sure. And for those inevitable drain moments, Xiaomi's familiar 67 watts fast charging comes to the rescue, 0 to 100% in just 45 minutes, keeping you juiced up on the go, no wireless charging at this price, but honestly, for that speed, it's easy to forgive. The 299 price tag on Amazon UK makes the Redmi a compelling choice. For that price, you get a powerful chipset, gorgeous display and solid battery life, a winning combo for everyday tasks, multimedia and even intensive gaming. So if you're interested in learning more, I've included links to the phone on Amazon UK and AliExpress in the description below. I'll update them with the US retailers once it becomes available there. So is the Redmi right for you? If you prioritize performance, display quality and battery life, all that at a competitive price point, definitely give it a closer look. By the way, just wanted to hit you with a quick disclaimer, this isn't a paid review, I dropped some cold hard cash on this one. And as always, no sugar coating but an honest dive into the good, the not so good and everything in between. Thanks for watching, catch you guys on the next one.